the trouble is the microphones pick up people's different voices and it interjects a lot. So, it's so if, if you guys want to probably uh, mute yourself so I can mute you and then if or you mute yourselves if you want to yeah. burn in questions and just shout out. So I'll just go and share the screen. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so obviously Stu, Stu Trotter asked me to do a thing around uh, planning. So there's a lot of, it's all about the coaching process. So the lead up to doing your session and all, uh, during and afterwards. So the first thing that we should always do, um, I'm sure some most of you have seen this. If you haven't, it's a good model to go to. So we plan, first of all, um, then we do and then we review. So obviously this is key to any kind of coaching that we want to do. Um, so if you if you fail to plan, plan to fail, everyone's heard that kind of phrase. Um, and it's so key to to plan just to get it get all out for our players. And again, they're going to recognise if we haven't prepared, um, which will affect the learning environment that you're trying to coach in as well. Uh, so if we're planning, um, do we think, is it too easy for them? Have we had much success that we want them to achieve? Uh, can we adapt throughout the session? Um, so we'll just go on to those kind of bits now. So if we come to the plan, I don't know if any of you have seen this or heard of this. Um, if you've done your IRCA recently, you might have seen it. Um, we can see we've got the game in the middle and then we're always going to create a tactical problem within that game. And you can see on the outside we've got our actions. So regarding actions, that could be um, kicking, catching, tackling, rucking, depends what kind of uh, tactical problem you might have put on. Um, then we've got obviously game fitness and preparation. So say if we've got a scrummaging session or a contact session, are our prey, are, let's say for scrummaging, are players physically prepared to go into the scrum, like tower power, all of that kind of stuff, game fitness. So are they fit enough to actually prepare for themselves for that kind of game? And then we've got the behaviours as well. So the behaviours can change um, from different conditions you put on a game um, to challenge our players that way um, by your tactical problems that you set. So that's a big thing. And then obviously you can see on the outside, it all links up to the learning environment that you're going to create through yourself, your coaches and your players as well. Um, so everyone happy with that one? Obviously next one, which is key when we're planning, obviously apes, if we haven't seen this, um, I'll definitely get this down and jot it down. We've got apes, which is a fundamental part of our coaching. So active, is everyone involved? Uh, are we challenging everyone? Uh, purposeful, ensure there is a clear objective for each session. Uh, enjoyable, obviously make it varied and challenging for everyone. We know we get that vast range of players new to the game, more experienced players. So we've got to make it enjoyable for everyone. And obviously, safe is we understand about safe. And then we come on to uh, principles of play. If we haven't heard this, this is a fundamental part of our game as well. Um, it's not in any particular order. You might see um, places like it, seen it like this. So start with contest possession. So thinking about kickoffs, scrum, line out ruck tackle um, and if we're thinking about attack we want to go forward straight away but so in defense um, we need support as well there and we need to keep the ball alive by offloading with our support players and then we can apply the pressure and then we should have score in there as well so the, this is fundamental really to our game and when we're planning a session with our principles of play if if we review say a game on a sunday or saturday um, if you have the pleasure of video, which I do, then at least one or two of these comes into sync. So did we get enough go forward or was there not enough support? And that's how I'll plan my session around the week coming forward. Uh, so you can see on this then, um, it's the transition between attack and defence. Uh, so if we look at the attack first, it's the game possession. We obviously to go forward with support from team to maintain continuity exactly score uh, but obviously you can see the transition straight across um, into defense so we can test 
by tackling, racking, uh, line speed uh, from going forward, applying pressure as fast as we can, prevent that territory being gained. And then we get the support by our teammates from tackle, rack, and then obviously regain possession and counter attack, which we transition straight back into our attack principles. And as a, as a first team, we focus a, a lot of this around our sessions. Um, so that's a real key one to think about on our planning. Are we coaching both sides of the ball? Um, is real is a real must. Not just right. We're going to do an attack session because if we've got two teams, one will be doing defence, and have we identified that? Can I cut in, Tom? Sorry, yeah, I know push can, mate. No, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. There was there was some relevance over the first three or four slides, and I'm not sure if anyone else is feeling the same as what I do. Um, principally, a club has their own strategies and their languages and their technologies, and I know England are now open based. As a club, are we now using the language that you're also using on the slides now? So when we're talking to age grade rugby from minis, juniors, seniors, obviously you're talking about your experiences at the club saying this is how we address. So going back to that previous slide, there's obviously words there like attack, defence, pressure. Yeah. Is it the club's incentive to use that kind of terminology and... Yeah, Definitely. So if we go back, about how we dress rugby from all ages. So when they move through the ranks, and I know a lot of clubs do this, we're using the same terminology within our coaching skills at any age group. So they understand when they go for the ages and get different coaches. We're always understanding that terminology. Yeah, mate. I, I would definitely use this terminology around principles of play. Um, so if we then talk about contest possession, we need to ask the question to our players. Okay, what do you think contest possession is? Oh, it's from a kickoff, or we've made a tackle, we're rucking here, so we're trying to get the ball back. Okay, obviously we always everyone shouts go forward and support. But you have an understanding of what each one means and what it looks like and how it influences uh, that continuity as well. Obviously, catch pass skills, offloading. Yeah, stuff. I think and the point of trying to make that to score. Is, is we now using as a club the same dictionary to coach throughout. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, right. This is fun, fundamental part of the game. Principles of play. Every every session should be planned around this. Definitely. No, that's fine. I just want to make sure that we're as a group, we all agree it's that we're now starting to use a, a, the vocabulary of, of of this. Yeah, because what we I'm recording this as well, so it's going to go on oh, onto our yeah. YouTube uh, channel as well, so you can catch up. Oh, I won't say any more. We go through. <laughs> Okay, uh, so that's the planning stage. So if we're thinking about our doing, so actually now the session's taking place. Um, we've got a game zone, okay. Um, I'm sure some of you might have heard about game zone. If not, um, this is a great tool to have into your, into your coaching. Um, so if we look onto the left here, the, with the game, we want to set the purpose. So for example, let's go forward. Um, with our uh, game, obviously, we let the players explore and discover. Um, they're going to get feedback from the game. Um, can they solve it themselves? Um, which will be great. Then you, then you as a coach, or as a coaching group, need to set further problems in the game. Again, letting our players explore and discover. If we've set some problems in the game and they can't solve it, then maybe this gives us an opportunity to maybe visit a skill zone to solve a problem and then we can come back into the game zone. So that's the game zone. If we then look onto the skill zone, so it's again a smaller area. Uh, you'd have, say, a, a 30 by 30 grid on, say, the game, and then maybe a 10 by 10, 5 by 5, depending on what the skill you're working on. We've got the skill zone uh, working in the middle, and then you can see you want it to be by being a game rather than a drill, we obviously think about these skill. People might have heard of whole part whole. The part area might have looked more like a drill, but if we can make it as much of a game as possible, then it gets quite exciting for them. Uh, came for different ability levels and needs. So again, if we're thinking about under nines, under tens, especially new new players into the game, if we're doing a rucking session or a tackling session, they're not confident. Have we got multiple coaches to then? take them into the skill zone, develop that area of skill. Um, and then obviously being planned or reactive, have we planned these skill zones? 
or have we seen something in the game? We spoke to our coaches saying, right, could you go and deliver this skill zone for me? Or what have we noticed in the game that might need work in? And at the top, allowing for players to make decisions as well. So don't always just jump in, let them play. Just let them play and have a little go. Okay. So that's mainly around the game and this skill. So thinking, thinking about our process skills now. So this is when the game's going on as well as in the skill zone. So the first thing we need to do before we even start is the extraction explanation. Okay, we need to make sure we plan what to say before we speak. We gain their attention, keep it simple, and obviously using questions to check for their understanding. A demonstration. So if we don't get um, the right understanding from our players, the next best way is to do a demonstration. So we can position ourselves so everyone can see and hear us. Made two, three key points max, repeat it more than once. So if we're thinking about the tackle, it's gonna is a key one, especially from under nines up. So if we're introducing the tackle for the first time, this is the perfect one to bring, make sure we have a demonstration. Again, it comes back to our safety element as well. Um, and then once the game's going on, we can use freeze frame. I don't know if people haven't heard of that. The game's going on, the coach just shouts freeze if we've seen something. Okay, which we'll come on to our next coaching process skill around observation analysis with our freeze frame. Again, we fo we've seen something, we focused on it at one point. Um, we observe from several times from different positions, compare the correct template to find matches and mismatches, and obviously build on strengths, correct faults, and praise the efforts. And then the biggest one for me as a coach is uh, giving feedback. Uh, with co-coaches, players, obviously ask a lot of questions to generate self-feedback that you've seen, limit information to one or two key points, give simple and effective information, obviously keep it positive all the time, no negative chat. Sorry, Tom. Yes. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Gareth. Just quick one on the, um, the, the, the feedback. Yeah. Does the club go with the, I know you said keep it positive all the time, but does the club go on like the sandwich sort of thing? So it's positive, constructive in the sense of this is, um, it's not like a bad thing, but you need to, this, you did this quite well, but you could do it better by doing this and then finish with a positive again. So you sort of sandwich in the, the bit that they need to work on in between two bits of positive. Would that be suitable? So, so the biggest thing is it's your style of questioning. So if you've seen something, say you've frozen something, uh, uh -huh. I would go, okay, why do you think I've frozen this here? Okay. And if they're feeding back to you, if they're not feeding back to you correctly, then you have to go through into your deeper secondary questioning to try and draw it out of them. Because if we tell right. them or steer them into a negative path, then they're not going to feel good about that. And again, in front of their peers, it's going to have a big impact. So it's just about asking them questions to see if they've identified what you've seen as a coach. And if you, okay. tell, if you tell them, they're not going to get any learning from that. Does that make, does that make sense, Gareth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes that's perfect sense. That's fine. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions on process skills at all? We can come back. Uh, so that's the that's the doing bit, and then last bit the review, which is again a fundamental part of our coaching session. Um, so at the end of the session, what were my goals for the players in the session? What were my personal goals as a coach? What went well, even better if. Um, if I was to do the session again, what would I do differently? Uh, what were the goals for the players and I for, um, and I for the next session? And obviously when you're doing this, reviewing your session, don't be afraid to always ask the players, co-coaches and parents or other observers. My honest reflection helps plan for that next session, definitely. And then on here, you can, I've just put up um, a session plan, which I've created. Um, it's, it's quite in detail, but again, it's been recorded, so you can go back and have a look on it. Obviously, we've, on here, we've got the venue, age group, numbers, the time. We don't have to go into this much detail, but I've just put on a, quite a detailed session plan, if needed. Which it just includes action points from previous sessions, learning from previous sessions, the goals for this session. Uh, introduction, warm up, uh, game zone, skill zone format, the diagram if needed. 
you can see there's what we bounce between about two or three different games and skill zones. Um, again, these are planned ones, but we could be reactive where we play the first game and we're seeing a lot of success, so we don't need to move on to any of this. But again, we'll come back to having a chat about that in a minute. So uh, that's about it from me, to be honest with you. So if uh, you guys want to ask any questions, then give us a shout. And let me know if there's any slides you want me to go back over. Tom, David, how are you doing? David. Um, how do you deal with players? How do you manage players who, even though you've, you've sort of stressed the point to them on a, on a couple of occasions, maybe three occasions, and you feel they're still not getting that point to the level that you would want them to have? How, how do you sort of reinforce that point without sort of you know, shouting at them or... Um, you know, sort of saying it in front of the, you know, all their peers. I mean, do you, do you sort of take them to one side, or do you sort of, you know, almost put your arm around them and and and, and try and so, you know, really stress it carefully? And how, how would you approach that sort of? Uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great question because the biggest thing I think for me is you got to know the person first and foremost. So can you challenge them in front of a group? Um, if yes, then by all means challenge them and asking those questions, and feedback. If you know that's not going to work for them, then maybe take them to one side and have a little one-to-one -one interaction with that player. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, yeah, it's around your questions and how deep you can go for them to draw that understanding out of them. Because mm -hmm. you've seen something, they're not quite getting it. Is it because of my question it isn't good enough that they're not understanding what I'm saying? Um, for them to then move forward and have an idea of actually what you mean for them. Mm -hmm. Help. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you've got. I mean, you've got sort of fifteen different characters in a team, and you different personality styles, etc. So, I mean, some people will get it, some people won't. Some yeah. people you need to sort of reinforce it two or three times. Other others get it straight away. No, definitely. And not in uh, coming into the senior environment. What three three years ago? It's only taken me till now, really, to understand all the personalities in the team and how it's going to interact with me coaching this way or that way so yeah it's a part of the game definitely so, thanks Super, thank you uh tom just got a quick question um yes ed we, when i've got like a say a group of three so four or five lads and we're doing a bit of a scrummaging session or something like that sometimes they're you know their the concentration will wander a bit and they'll start to mess around and i'm trying to sort of keep their concentration and sometimes I feel I'm starting to lose them a bit. It's, what, what's a good way of getting them back in or will I just get them to move on once they've just kind of lost interest? So how, how long have you been doing, say, that scrummaging session for? Uh, you could be sort of, say, doing it for 10 minutes and you'd just be practising, like, I don't know, just sort of just striking the ball of the hooker and things like that. And then you'd sort of run it around. you get them all to try different positions. So they're all yes. ever going to be the prop. And, you know, and by the time they've all ever sort of go, sometimes certain kids are great, some they start to jump on each other, they start to lose concentration. I always find that a little difficult to try and keep that group motivated to keep, you know, I always find that very difficult then. Well, the biggest thing for me is, you saw that, uh, if I go back to um, probably a session plan here, so you can see game zone, skill zone at the bottom here. So yeah. I'll, I'll just keep jumping between game zone, skill zone. So if you're doing the game, say around a kind of scrum touch, so say you've got a 3v3 on, say on the fourth touch, they have to come and do a 3v3 scrum and then but the hooker has to change every time and does the hooker then obviously if you're working on the hooker your skill zone would then be with uh maybe one or two players focusing on that hooker how many coaches have you got in your group oh uh, we've got quite a few i mean we could actually sometimes we've got up to six on a good day yes. so so i would have multiple skill zones going on so you'd have a game zone of say i don't know how many kids say so you got 20 kids but every time you're taking two or three out and you just keep rotating every 30 seconds to one minute. So they're not, yeah. they're not losing that. Is that okay? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So just keep, just keep on bouncing and getting the game going and rotating all the players to have an, have a go at that position. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Cool. Any other questions um, guys? What we've said? Yeah, Tom. So going yeah. back to Abe's, um, yeah. It's just a generalisation of a question. Obviously, you're trying to plan at the moment that 
boys in our age group haven't really got de designated positions and it's really at the moment we're still concentrating on skill sessions um so there's lots of different skills i think it may be in the next slide um where you're working around the principles of that and talking to about possession defense pressure continuity how do you think we should plan a month because i'm thinking you know we've got four couple of hour sessions every sunday is it sort of to pick two two principles of those apes for each sunday or try and do all of cover all of them or you know what, what's your best sort of what have yeah, you great, done great in the past to give us so great question. So apes should be every session. That's what your session should look like. Yeah. Yeah. There's a purpose of enjoying it and safe. And then, so say if we're working on, say, just go forward. Okay. Do we just go forward and attack? No, we don't. We go forward in defence as well. So just focus yeah. on coaching both sides of the ball on go forward. Yeah. And then we can look at. Okay, that does cre that does create support. Um, but then focus the next week on support and then you can do different game zone, skill zones around that. And then right, so it's not, just don't throw the whole kitchen sink at one session or one after, just, just break it down in nice, simple sections and in a month you may come, uh, uh, covered all of them, for example. Yeah, definitely. So just do a session, say, this. you could do this, so go forward on the first session, coaching both sides of the ball. Uh, next session, right, let's look at support. When you got on that go forward session, it might have reacted into that support already. But then, how can you, as yeah. a coaching group, adapt what you've seen from that last session? That's why reflecting and reviewing on the session is so important. Yeah. Down. What did What do we see? What has gone well for us? Uh, even well, as, even as an age group, kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, as an age group, I think we reflect every half an hour to be honest with you, because there's opportunities where we've had to spin it and do different things because as Ed pointed out earlier, we may have lost certain interests or it's not combining enough of the team and we may just change things as we go through. Yeah, no, definitely. Cool, good question, mate, that, mate. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Yeah, hi, Tom, Jonathan, Jonathan Hi, West. Jonathan, hi, yeah. yeah under, under 15s for next season, just to give you a, a reference. So. I get all the all the principal stuff. Yeah, I love all that. makes makes really good sense. But my my coaching limitation, I guess, is is one of let's say I was planning a session around something really simple, something really easy, tackling. Yeah. <clears throat> so I've got two or three. I'll refer to them as drills or, or practicals that I would go to, but that's all. And I guess my my requirement is how can I learn more sort of tackling skill or uh, game uh, sort of session ideas. It's, it's just to vary it for the lads because I've been doing it for a while and, and they know me and I know them and potentially it's not working for some of them. Yeah. Um, I'm just looking for kind of some more, more practical ideas. Um, same for, for like rucking. I think scrummaging was sound in, in view of who we've got in the coaching setup. But it, but it's just like um you know a few more ideas just to bring a bit, bit of it's freshness. A, to the biggest thing I'd say if um is going to watch other coaches coach, um, okay, uh, you'll be more than welcome to come up and see uh, the see how the senior uh, coaches do it, uh, okay, around any kind of contact skills. Uh, there's low if you go on to englandrugby.com uh, on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, keep your boots on. There's lots of stuff on there as well. Um, Thank you. The biggest thing is going on those resources, but ha have a look at the kind of stuff that they're doing. Don't copy it. Uh, think about how it's going to then impact your players and what's going to be best beneficial for your players that way. But the other thing is, yeah, trying to get into different environments and see how other people are coaching. Because when I'm delivering, say, on level twos or level threes, I pick up so much stuff, which then I take back and do it for my senior boys on a Tuesday, Thursday. So that's what I'd say. Go out and see as many coaches as possible, but then look at the resources online as well, like Keep Your Boots On and stuff like that, which has got some great stuff on there. Yeah, makes makes good sense. So I, I, I have a look at, I think it's a rugby coaching TV. There's some good content on there that I've borrowed. Yeah. That, that's the thing. But, you know, to, to Chris's point earlier about, um, you know, like aligning terminology or maybe even moves through the, the age groups, 
do you, do you recommend that we as coaches should be sort of trying to align on, you know, how we coach the tackle, how we coach the ruck, you know, whatever aspect of play we're talking about, but ju just so there's some consistency or, or other? So coming down from me, say, from senior all the way down? Well, well possibly. I mean, if, if that's, you know, if that's... Um, I you know, would say that... that because once you get like the 15 aside game, like under 14s, 15s, you definitely need to think about, if I go back to this slide, you've got the game in the middle and then we need to create those tactical problems. So let's think about some scenario coaching. I don't know if you guys have done it before, where you could do some scenario coaching around pressure under time or point. So the ones I like to do is we've got two minutes to play, one team are two points up, um, the other team are uh, two points down, obviously, with two minutes to play. They're going to have a line up um, in, out in the opposition 10. So what's their, um, what's their decision-making going to be around attack? Do they set up for a maybe drop goal or do they try and cr create problems by sucking more players in, scoring out wide? But then the defence, how are they going to defend their two-point lead with only 10 metres out from their line? So all that kind of scenario-based kind of tactical problem stuff, especially for that 15 aside game when you get to 15, 16s, is is a massive is a massive bonus for them, I think. Mm. Yeah, we well, Dump, Dumps has done a bit of that stuff. To be fair, that's uh, that's been quite fun. I mean, my my reflection on that is that you know I, I get it, and I, and I get you know it's like empowering players, let them make the decisions, let them self organise, and all that. In yeah. reality dealing with kids of 14, 15, who unfortunately, most of them aren't watching a lot of rugby. Uh, they're not students of the game and, and so on. And, you know, I, I think a great concept, but for that, well, for the audience I'm dealing with, a lot of it is, I don't know, shrug of the shoulders and, uh, you but, know, I'll just yeah. give, it, give it my best. Which, which I think that's, that's, the, that's how powerful you as a coaching group can um, like challenge your players then. The fair say no, I don't know. Is it because we're not asking them the right questions? Like of this, yeah. why, why have we frozen the game here? Okay, why have I frozen it here? If if it's a say you've been working on rucking and you see mm -hmm. body position or we haven't presented the ball effectively, have I frozen the game at that point? Okay, and if it, if it keeps happening, then maybe that's the time. Right, let's go over to a skill zone. Yeah, and adapt and develop there and then to work on that and then let's transition it back into the game where the conditions around the game will focus on what you've just seen. So say it's body position at the ruck. Okay, this, uh, this is the condition you can do at the ruck. Okay, once they've nailed that, then let's challenge them a different way. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. It, 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 all makes, it does make perfect sense, actually. It's, uh, it's just nice to, to sort of bounce these things off you and no, of anyone course. else. Yeah, no, definitely. As you... I think it's a danger you sort of get, well, just talk about myself, stuck in a bit of a rut with, with what you do and how you do it, because it's what you know. And then back to your point, go and watch other coaches. Coach is how you, you broaden it. So definitely check in again on, on coming down on a Tuesday, Thursday, just, just to, to have a looky. Yeah, no, please do. Um, like I say, the door's always open. So um, we've, got, we've got an exciting coaching group this year as well. So no, it'll be, uh, it'll be good. Good for you guys to come down. That's if it ever starts happening. That is. Oh, it's a big if. <laughs> oh, yeah. But even on the even on the Tuesday, we're starting on the second of July. Uh, everyone's more than welcome to come down and just have a look what kind of stuff we're doing with social distancing, two meters away, and so on. So, by all means, come down for that as well. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks, Tom. Seven minutes left. Are there any more questions at all that anyone would like to have a chat around? I've got one, but if, I've already had a turn. But if anyone else has got one, I've, I've, it's a bit of a per, well. It's a question that's in the back of my mind. Um, currently, the age group that we run is under twelves, uh, so I've we as a coaching team have got a blank canvas on positioning players. So many decades ago, I'm short, fat, and hairy, and got stuck in the front row. If you got yeah. given a blank canvas, Tom. How would you now start doing player selection? What's the new technology and thought patterns about how you position players and teams going forward if you're given the opportunity to remodel a, game, a group of players? Uh, I, I wouldn't do any specific, position-specific stuff till 
I would say, yeah, the lot when you start getting to 15s, 16s, that kind of stuff, you're going to start noticing who, who's going to enjoy a bit more front row, who's going to be the most athletic, athletic to jump in the line out. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, it's uncontested line outs at under 14s. Under 15s, that's when they start jumping uncontested. And then 16s is when, obviously, it's a contested jump. So you've still got loads of time for these players to mature and develop in different ways. So yeah. the fundamentals of the game, which I always coach, every Tuesday, every Thursday, without fail, catch and pass, tackle, breakdown. Those three are our fundamentals, which never change. If you can get our kids to do it from under sixes, by the time they get to seniors, 19, 20 years old, their catch and pass should be second to none. And I know our, our catch and pass is, is not good enough. Tackle's not good enough. Breakdown's not good enough. And the, if you think about the fundamentals of the game, how many times do we catch and pass? How many times do we run? How many times do we tackle? How many times do we try and clear the breakdown? So it, Tuesday, Thursday straight away that's what we work on it's that repetition yes it, sometimes they is the same stuff but has to be done close skill of repetition catch and pass definitely we do a good 20 minutes of that i would say before going well, that should be the same for any age by the sounds of it it's the principles yeah, of what we definitely. do all in hand yeah yeah loads of yeah, i mean but then Phil was obviously decision making in there as well Correct. I mean, we've not fixed any positions. We've got boys that want to be where they want to be, um, but we rotate the whole lot. And if we see a guy getting comfortable, I can see Phil laughing. We'll move them out of that comfort zone and move it around and get them trying all sorts of different positions. And and I just didn't know if there was any technology behind it. And I'm in agreement. We we move them around. Their, their body shape, sizes, their skills are going to change in the next six years before we get to senior level. So. And then they may be a completely model or child by that point or adult. Yeah, exactly. Like if they can all catch, pass, kick, uh, like you say, back on the days of front rows and second rows being able to kick because the amount of times they recreate space, they might have seen something, they kick it. You never know what might happen. So no, exactly. we can't stop players from going and exploring themselves because we can't see everything by standing on the side or behind the posts you know so we're we're pretty much resonated what and while they're playing if we think about if they're on a game day or especially in a senior team i get the opportunity to speak to them before the game half time and post game obviously we have the preparation all week to build up to it so you have three key interventions well two key interventions really pre and at half time so you've got to really think about what kind of stuff you're going to say and you don't want to overload information as well. Just some key points. Yeah, yeah. And that's what's really come really come on this season. The, the the playing group has really matured. Senior players coming back, and it's just given them the opportunity to go out and explore themselves. And uh, they ask that you ask the right question, ask the questions at half time, um, or if, let them speak if they're not bringing out what you've seen as well. Then you ask the questions. What about this? Have you seen? Think of, did you think about doing what do you think about doing this? And then boom, you're there. Um, Tom, I just got a quick question, yeah. very similar to Chris's. Um, uh, under 13s this year, if we ask them, we're going to be going into contested scrums, yeah. uh, six man scrums. Is it a, a basically the same sort of thing? We're just going to um, just let the lads, I think, got some lads that I think are keen to do it and some aren't, and we'll just let the lads that are keen just to give it a go, basically, at this stage. Yeah, definitely. If look, you're going to get kids that won't want to do it, and that's absolutely fine. We don't want to force them into it, but hopefully, our coaching uh, prior to that, they would have been confident on their body position anyway. Obviously, yeah, there's a bit of pushing now, but remember, it's only one and a half meters they can push, so it's not like they're going to get steamrolled backwards. But again, it's with coaching the scrum, I would definitely just work on body shape on each other. Stay away from scrum machines. Uh, don't know if you ever if you've done the principles of scrummaging CBD. No, but there's I intend to do it this year. Yeah, I'll definitely go on. It's a great great course. Again, it goes game game zone skill zone format through um, the scrum. So no, really good. But again, if you're like myself or Paul to come down and help out of a scrummaging session, then we'll be more than happy to. That'd be great. Yeah, again, that'd be great. Come up, come up and see what we do on a 
Tuesday, Thursday. Definitely. Cool. Uh, nice one. Cool, guys. Well, if I, we've got about a minute left. Um, any other burning questions at all? Uh, very good, Tom. Uh, I don't know what the format is going forward, but it's been, you know, it's been a good 40 minutes. Yeah. Uh, appreciate yeah. To, to do some more going forward and hopefully in the clubhouse next time. Yeah, no, definitely. And what I would say, if, if you guys got any kind of topics you want me to go over, say like Scrum for Thursday's line um, I don't know, any kind of tackling, rucking, so anything like that, just ping it over to me. Um, and then I'll be happy to put a presentation together again and we can go through it. Brilliant. Thank you. Oh, cool. right, guys. Well, thanks a lot for coming on. Thanks, Tom. Much appreciated. See you later, everyone. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye.